PV equals NRT. Well, the P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles, RT isn't Richard Thornley, that's me, R's the gas constant, and T is the temperature. It can't be that simple. Well, the pressure has to be in kilopascals, volume in litres or decimeters cubed, same thing. The gas constant, that looks complicated, it's in the data booklet. And temperature, we might try and mess with you by giving it to you in a unit other than Kelvin, like degree centigrade, but it, it should be in Kelvin, so just add 273 if we give it to you in degree centigrade. So let me draw out an ideal gas. Well, there is no such thing as a real ideal gas. It doesn't exist in the real world, but the equation still works really quite well. So some things you need to know about this ideal gas is that the equation assumes a zero volume of gas. Now that's the atoms and the molecules themselves that has zero volume. I'm not saying that V in the equation is zero. No, 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 that's wrong. The individual atoms and molecules have zero volume. Wow. So helium, that's really tiny. But DNA gas, well, DNA gas, that, that's going to be huge if it, if it even existed. So helium's going to give better results with the ideal gas equation than a big molecule. We're also assuming elastic collisions. And that means that they, they don't react and they don't stick together, the molecules. They just bounce off each other cleanly. They don't stick. So again, helium, that's great. Hydrogen fluoride, that has a strong dipole, so it's quite sticky. So hydrogen fluoride is not going to give us good results with the ideal gas equation. And if I have hot nitrogen and hydrogen, well, that's going to make ammonia. No, no, that's, they're going to stick together and react. That's going to give me terrible results with the ideal gas equation. If I was to increase the pressure by decreasing the volume, it's no longer really a gas so much anymore. I'm kind of liquefying it. If I push gas together, then it, it could liquefy. The intermolecular bonds are going to be more attractive and everything's closer together, so it's going to stick together more. It's not going to be very gassy, if you will. And if I cool down an ideal gas, what will also happen is the molecules or the atoms will come closer together as the temperature lowers. As they get slower, the intermolecular forces will get uh, consequently relatively bigger, and so they start to clump together. The slower things go, the easier it is for them to stick together, and that's bad, because if you, if you stick a gas together, well, that's called a liquid. And so the colder it is, the more liquidy, if you will, the gas is becoming, the more it's going to stick to each other. So let's look at an easy question with no tricks in it whatsoever. So PV equals NRT. The pressure is in the question. The volume's in the question. The number of moles is in the question. The gas constant, well, that's in the data booklet. And that just leaves me with T for temperature. Now, when I solve that, it's going to give me temperature in Kelvin, don't forget. And we're going to use two sig figs because it's multiplication and division. And it goes, the answer goes with the the part of the question with the least sig figs. Well, that was an easy one. So this is a medium difficulty question. Let's see if we can work out R from the data that's given, and you actually have to memorize this data. So the pressure is 101, that's standard. Some textbooks say it's 100, but the data booklet says 101. Oh dear. If you get an infinity in physics, that might be okay, but in chemistry, infinities are always going to be bad. So I forgot to convert to Kelvin, right, and I fixed that up. So I get 8.29. We put the units in. The pressure gives me that. The volume gives me that. The moles at the bottom, and the temperature is also at the bottom. Now, it's not exactly the one in the data booklet, so there's been some rounding uh, here and there with the numbers that the IB expect you to use. So this is an evil question with a couple of tricks. The first trick being, where's molar mass in the ideal gas equation? Oh, El Diablo, even he thinks it's evil. Well, let's write it out, PV equals NRT. Molar mass, PV equals NRT, and uh, well, you know, the N, the number of moles is mass over molar mass, isn't it? So that's where molar mass is hidden. 
So let's change that to mass divided by molar mass. In fact, everything's divided by molar mass. Rearrange that to get molar mass on its own. All right, let's put the numbers in. So 15.0 grams is the mass. Gas constant from the data booklet. Temperature, well, don't forget, you have to convert to Kelvin. Adding 273 gives you that. Pressure and the volume are. Now, the volume is given in milliliters. You have to convert it to liters. Great, that gives me a molar mass of 71.1, three sig figs. Now, the question says the actual molar mass is found to be slightly different. Account for this. Okay, well, you didn't use an ideal gas because there's no such thing. So what could have gone wrong? Well, maybe the molecule's a little polar and that makes it less ideal. Or maybe, maybe it underwent some sort of slight reaction and that also made it less ideal.